Game Five by Every Shade of Happy, read by Rat Overlord. Summary: Game Five commences, and Midoriya has never felt more ready. You are all acceptable out there, with a few exceptions. Jiro, your plan to ambush from above was decent. After all, the reason Hawk's villain captures are so high is because so few people rarely even look up. But while it was a good plan, you forgot that you aren't invincible, and stopped paying attention to your own surroundings. This allowed for Midoriya's group to ambush you from above. But you were second to last team to get out. So, good work. Jiro flushes with pleasure, even though something in the back of her head niggles with guilt. She learned the technique from Midoriya, after all. Momo. Your group put your quirk to excellent use by making camouflage blankets before we left, which you also exploited the loophole and the rules effectively, and you even perfected your camouflage technique from hide-and-seek. But Todoroki, Seto, you can't just rely on Momo to carry out through the game. You weren't able to use your quirks this round, and as soon as that rule was implemented, you acted as if you were suddenly useless to your teammate. The two boys looked down in embarrassment. But while the camouflage was a good idea, you had no plan for offense. You were the third team out because no one could find you, but once they did, you were woefully unprepared. A more viable option would have been to hide until dark and then go searching while leaving your flag still hidden. It's still much harder to find a well-hidden flag compared to three teenagers who have been in the same position for hours and might be shifting around. Momo nods determinedly. She was happy with her placement, but Aizawa was right. There was so much that she could do to improve. Midoriya, Togoyami, Shinso. Excellent work. Quirks were not allowed once you got to the forest, but you didn't let this hinder you. You lured people in effectively and followed them back to their own camp so you could ambush them instead. There's not much I can say about your performance that was negative. You used your teammates excellently, and not one person was carrying the team. Good job. Said team grin at each other in delight. If I didn't mention your team, you'll have remedial classes with me after school today. Uraraka's hand shoots up and she begins to speak before she can be called on. Sensei! Why are we only now getting remedial lessons? You didn't offer them after the other lessons! Aizawa pauses, then continues. As I was about to say before I was interrupted... You are only now receiving them because we wanted to see your baseline, and then we wanted to see if you would grow to strive to correct your mistakes on your own. Some succeeded, and others have failed miserably. So now you're receiving extra lessons that aren't as involved to catch you up with your classmates. Without these lessons, you most would likely fail this unit, and you can't move on to second year without passing the stealth portion. Uraraka nods, looking embarrassed. Sorry, sensei, she mutters. Aizawa doesn't acknowledge the apology, turning to write on the board as he talks. The next stealth lesson will be your last before the test, so I suggest you all start going plus ultra. It's called Guardian. The goal is to find the item that the teachers have snuck into your room and guard it against the others. And, of course, to figure out and steal the items from your other classmates. Ido raises his hand, and Aizawa calls on him, eyes flickering for a second to Midoriya, who tenses minutely. He can't help but wonder what that was exactly. Is this not the same as the flag belt we wore in the first game? Aizawa shrugs. It's similar, I suppose, but there's a few key differences. This is an intelligence-gathering lesson, as well as testing your hopefully improved skills. This game is designed to challenge your observation skills and your ability to discreetly gather information. After all, the item could be anything from a half tube of used lipstick to a shirt a half shade different from the ones you typically wear, and it's your job to figure out what has been messed with in your room and what has changed about your classmates' rooms as well. Eden nods in understanding. Thank you, sir! I saw a nods in acknowledgement. Can anyone tell me why these skills might be useful in hero work, or more specifically, underground heroics? To no one's surprise, Midoriya's hand shoots up. 
Midoriya. It's best to describe with a scenario, sir. Imagine you're sent on an undercover mission to infiltrate a group of villains. There, you will need to discreetly gather information without tipping off your marks. It would be rather obvious if they mentioned a drug deal going down in your presence and then it was busted by a hero or police. If the villains are smart, they won't just accuse you without proof. They'll probably bug your room, which leads to the second part of the exercise. Being able to recognize a disturbance in your room could be the difference between life and death. Midori can feel the eyes of his classmates on him, but for the first time, instead of shrinking back from the attention, he basks in it. Exactly. Now, team-ups are allowed if you trust any of your classmates enough to do that. And once again, the items could be anything from a shoe to a lipstick. That's up to you to figure out, and it goes on until only one person still holds their own item. The teachers are currently placing the items so that they'll be there when you get out of class, but that will be the only hint you receive. You'll pass if you manage to keep your item for three days. Any extra items you manage to get will be applied as extra credit to your overall grade for this section, something many of you need if you plan on graduating anytime soon. Once the game ends, we'll see how effectively you are able to gather information, register disturbances in your space, and gather items. Any questions? No one raises their hand, except Midoriya, of course. I saw what might not have praised him for a previous answer, but he knows that the older man is proud of his answer. Yes, Midoriya. Midoriya turns bright red, shifting in his seat uncomfortably. Uh, can I go to my room for a minute? Jiro snorts in the corner. <laughs> what? Now you need to cheat just to make sure you're the best? She accuses, rolling her eyes spitefully, once again ignoring the stirring guilt in her chest. Aizawa sends a warning glance at her way, but Midori just shrugs it off. Well, no, not exactly. It's just that... He's interrupted by a loud ringing that emanates from Aizawa's pocket. Aizawa pulls it out with an irritable huff. Everyone who has his personal number knows better than to call him during school hours unless it was an emergency. To his surprise, it's Nemuri, who'd been placing the items in the student's room. Midoriya is pale, which causes Aizawa's own gut to curdle in suspicion. What exactly had that problem child had in his room that he didn't want anyone seeing? Aizawa answers it after a moment of hesitation. You better be bleeding out. Show your fucking child is a fucking gremlin! Shota blinks in confusion. That wasn't what he'd been expecting at all. What? Your goddamn goblin of a brat booby trapped his room! Do you know how embarrassing it is to be trapped on the roof of his dorm room by his stupid fucking unbreakable tape? Aizawa tries to hide the snort that escapes, but he obviously does a bad job, if Namuri's scream of rage was anything to say about it. This causes him to start laughing harder than he's laughed in years, doubling over in debilitating laughter. It takes him a few minutes to calm down, stomach aching, and wiping a few tears out of the corner of his eyes. Anything Namuri had said during his laughing fit is lost on him, but he waves to Midoriya lazily, pulling out his sleeping bag as he hangs up. <laughs> Midoriya, go let her down and take a picture before you do it. He orders before crawling into his bag. His kiddos are looking at him like hell just froze over, but he couldn't care less. All that laughing took a lot out of him, so now it was nap time. He told the kids all of relevant info anyways. It's a free period. Do whatever. He mumbles, promptly passing out. Midoriya scampers out of the room in embarrassment. He hadn't wanted anyone to break into his room in retaliation for how he'd been performing in the game, so he'd booby-trapped his room. If he'd known a teacher was entering, he would have warned them at the very least, even if he didn't take all the traps down. He supposes he should be grateful it was the tape that caught Namuri and not the giant dung beetles or glitter. He isn't sure Namuri would forgive him if she had to pick glitter out of her hair for the next few years. The walk is quick, and Midori completes his task easily, much to Midnight's embarrassment. He'd created the solution on the tape himself, so it took a certain salve to weaken the tape and loosen the restraints. He'd taken inspiration from the tensile strength of Aizawa Sensei's scarf and the stickiness of Saro's tape. Mixed them together, and it created the perfect trap. 
He takes a picture, as instructed, and is unsurprised to find an unknown number requesting the picture as well as Aizawa. Nitsu was chaotic enough to want to have blackmail material on his teachers anyways. Thank you, Midoriya. If you would please de-booby trap your room so I may finish with my task, it would be greatly appreciated. Midoriya sniggers at the slightly affronted tone in her voice. He knows it's just embarrassment from being bested by a first year, but he tries not to think about how novel an idea it is that he can laugh at a teacher's embarrassment without fear of retaliation. There's about six traps to defuse, not including the previously mentioned ones, so he hops onto it. He's typically the first one back anyways, so there shouldn't be a problem with Jiro trying to sneak in in the first place. Once he's done, he bows and leaves, pretending to not notice the extra notebook placed on top of his research notebooks. He'll have time to look at it later. When Midoriya returns, he's comforted by the knowledge that he's not about to walk into a lion's den. Sure, some of his classmates might still be bummed with him, but he has allies now. Something even more novel than laughing at Midnight's embarrassment. Maybe he even has friends. The classroom would feel much more comforting than it has in the last week. School passes quickly, and Midori is once again the first to dart out of the classroom, though this time he's followed by a stampede of 1A students. Midoriya yelps in shock when Mina slides by on a stream of acid. Tsu isn't far behind, literally jumping overhead to cling to the roof. Sorry, Midoriya, but you aren't going to be getting the best of us this time, Gattel. Their eyes meet, and Midoriya is shocked to see the determination in them. There's no anger clouding them anymore, instead just pure determination to beat him on her own terms. It's not an apology, not even close to one, but it's something. Midoriya nods at the unexpected challenge and breaks into a run, soon catching up with the earthbound classmates. They nearly trample several third years, including Mirio. Um, as soon as he sees them coming, though, he permeates into the ground, sticking his head back up a few moments later to cheer the students on with a smile. To Midoriya's shock, he isn't the first person back. It's actually Todoroki, who trapped many of their classmates in ice to get ahead. Midoriya is right behind them, followed by Ida, who'd used Recibro Burst to get out of Todoroki's trap. Midoriya doesn't stop to exchange pleasantries, bounding past them and to his room. Besides the notebook, it's otherwise unchanged, though he does check the room for bugs just in case. Again, he wouldn't put it past Netsu. Once he's made sure that his room is still secure and nothing else was messed with, he grabs the notebook and flips through it curiously. On the inner flap, written in chicken scratch, are the words, Our first lessons. Feel free to start on the material ahead of time. We will start next Wednesday. We will be having a quiz on the material that you have gotten through then as well. Midoriya knows it goes without saying that it's from Nedsu. A small burst of warmth echoes through his chest as he weighs his options. Technically, he's in the middle of game, and this time could be better spent crawling around the vents and figuring out everyone's talismans. But the notebook is far too tempting. Besides, it won't be too hard to play catch-up with the others anyways. Decision made, Midoriya leans against his pillows and flips the notebook to the first page titled How to Get What You Want, A Comprehensive Guide to Psychological Warfare and Emotional Manipulation, and begins to read. Midoriya is knocked out of his thoughts by a knock on the door. He grabs his phone and checks the security cameras. He relaxes once he sees Todoroki's distinctive hair and gets up to unlock the door. He highly doubts that Todoroki is going to try and trick or betray him. He opens the door a crack and smiles out at Todoroki. Hey Todoroki, how can I help you? Todoroki blinks slowly as if thinking over the question. Can I come in, Midoriya? Midoriya nods and opens the door a bit wider. Uh, be careful coming in. I reset the traps when I got back. He points at the tripwires littering the floor. Todoroki nods in understanding and is careful as he walks in, checking the ground every time he puts his foot down. Once he's made it to the desk chair without incident, he sits down gingerly. Now, how can I help you? One of the things he likes so much about Todoroki is that he's willing to cut straight to the chase. I'm willing to make an alliance with you. Midoriya cocks his head in confusion. The last time they teamed up, Midoriya had technically betrayed him. Why? Todoroki shrugs. I'm no good at these underground lessons. If you couldn't tell, I was taught to just go in using brute force and overwhelm them. So I need help. Midoriya nods. It 
Makes sense, after all. Uh, what could you offer me? Uh, get me as close to the end of the lesson as possible, and I'll give you my item and any I manage to collect in the interim. Mindoria takes a minute to think about it. He really doesn't need the partnership. He's sure he would be able to figure out easily and take it easily, but he and Todoroki were friends, or at least he wanted them to be. Okay, I'll help you. Now here's what we're going to do. Two hours later, Midoriya finds himself in the common rooms, scribbling notes in his new notebook, questions and thoughts on the new lessons that he'd been offered to ask Nedzu about, or even his own insights and ideas on how he could do it better. Across the room is Todoroki, who's curled up under a blanket watching TV. To the normal eye, it looked like they were both just absorbed in their task, but in reality, they were using it to mask how they were secretly observing everyone else in the room. In intervals of 2, 7, 5, and 13 seconds, Midori would glance up from his notes and scour people's persons. As he'd explained to Todoroki, most people would try and hide their items on their person, if not now, then at school tomorrow. It was smart in terms of it couldn't easily be stolen from their person, but for someone like Midoriya, someone who'd survived by noticing changes in people's actions, in the way that they held themselves, it simply made his job easier by noticing what they were carrying that they didn't typically carry. He'd given Todoroki a rundown on what to look for before they came down, but he's not sure how well he'll do since he'd only been able to give Todoroki a few tips before coming down, but Todoroki could always surprise him. Honestly, this felt a little easy if Midori's being honest. For instance, Uraraka has put on strawberry chapstick for the six different times in the last hour when typically she didn't carry chapstick, and when she did, it was always vanilla flavored. In fact, Uraraka hates the taste of strawberries. She would be his first target. Kora was carrying a bird feeder that was a different brand from his typical one. Ojiro is clicking a pen that he'd been holding for the last hour he'd been here obsessively, the tiny clicks permeating the brief bouts of silence. Momo had superstitiously slid a tea brand into the cabinets that wasn't her preferred choice. Even more suspicious, she hadn't raved about the new flavor like she typically would when she found a new flavor. After a few more minutes of observation, Midori stretched with a wide grin. Only about half the class is down here, including him and Todoroki, but he believes he's correctly identified every item the class had been stupid enough to bring in. Only Shoji hadn't brought anything that Midori could identify as abnormal, so he either hasn't found it or is keeping it in his room. Personally, Midori thinks it's the safer option. The only people who would be able to tell something was different would be regular visitors to their dorm rooms. He gets up, gathering his items into his arms, and starts walking towards Todoroki. Hey Todoroki, what are you watching? He asks cheerfully as he walks by Ojiro. He pretends to stumble and falls into Ojiro, sending his stuff flying, and more importantly, Ojiro's pen flying. Oh, uh, I'm so I'm so sorry, Ojiro! Midori gasps dropping to the floor to pick everything up, fingers curling around Ojiro's pen victoriously and hiding it among his mess of papers. Ojiro has dropped to his knees and is searching for something desperately. With a nervous smile, Midori offers up his own pen to the boy. I think this is yours? Ojiro smiles thinly and nods, snatching the pen away from Midoriya and quickly gets up and walks away. If Midoriya had any doubt that the pen was Ojiro's item, that interaction wiped all doubt from his mind. Ojiro really needed to invest in some acting classes. Midoriya finishes gathering his stuff and slowly rises to his feet. As he finishes the walk to Todoroki, he rolls the hidden pen in his notebook thoughtfully. That was pathetically easy. He drops down next to Todoroki and smiles at the dual-haired boy. Hello, Midoriya. I'm watching a show Denki recommended for me. It's called Bridgerton. Midoriya nods and settles in. Mm, that sounds good. I've been writing notes on some of my favorite heroes for what seems like forever. I think I might need to take a little bit of a break. You don't mind if I join you, do you? Todoroki shakes his head softly. Of course not, Midoriya. I always enjoy spending time with you. They both turn to the screen then and let the pompous voices from the characters set in the 1800s wash over them. After a few episodes, they leave to meet up in one of their rooms. But for now, they needed to be patient. 
so they don't arouse any sort of suspicion. Two hours later sees them sprawled across Todoroki's futon. Did you see anything? Midori asks quietly, eyes flickering around for signs of someone listening. I think Uraraka was using the wrong chapstick, and you picked up Ojiro's pen, didn't you? Todoroki mutters. Midoriya's eyebrows raise in surprise. While Todoroki hadn't noticed anything that he hadn't, he'd still caught some of the people. Yes, to both of those. Good job. Midori quietly lifts the items he'd seen people have. Uraraka had a strawberry chapstick, Momo had the tea, Denki had a new charger for his DS, Sero had a new charm for his phone case, Ojiro had the pen, Mina had some leg warmers on that I've never seen her wear before, and Bakugo was wearing a different brand of earphones when he came down to make himself dinner. Shoji, however, didn't bring his item with him, or at the very least, I couldn't see it. I'm going to infiltrate their rooms around three to go grab it all, Midoriya says. Let me... Midoriya pauses. I won't be found out, Todoroki. You'll be caught. Midori gets up, thinking the argument is finished, but Todoroki stops him with a hand on his shoulder. Let me do it. If I get caught, worse that'll happen. You'll be able to grab the items tomorrow. But you aren't the only one who knows how to sneak around. Midori gnaws on his lips softly. He isn't sure he trusts Todoroki enough to do this, but if he sends Todoroki, he'll be able to search some of the other rooms for items as well. He looks into Todoroki's eyes and sees the earnest pleading in them and remembers their conversation during the sports festival. Thinking of how he rarely hears Todoroki when he's approaching, thinks of how they've both felt burning fists closing around their throat. How they've gone through something similar, even if Todoroki didn't realize it until recently. Okay. The next morning, over half the class wakes up to find their items gone. Todoroki had managed to gather everything Midori had pointed out, all without being caught. Midori himself had searched several rooms as their occupants lay sleeping mere feet away, and found a few as well. Todoroki had immediately handed the items over, and, in thanks, Midori had given him a few extra to keep for extra credit. The soft smell that he'd received in kind had caused a warm burning to ignite in his stomach. This would be a beautiful alliance. Midoriya just knows it. The next two days pass in a blur. Midoriya and Todoroki had dominated the game, and by the time the third day rolled around, they'd collected a pile of random items to bring to class. They'd split the items, with Todoroki taking a few to boost his grade, as well as his own item, and Midoriya taking the rest. They hadn't found everything, to Midoriya's annoyance. Jiro had kept her item close by, and he hadn't managed to collect it from her, with her being on such high alert. However, he had figured out that it was a classical CD, one that she'd been wanting at least for the past few months, but had never gotten around to buying. Bakugo and Shinso had struck up an unlikely alliance, and they'd swapped several items when Midoriya entered, so he hadn't been able to find Bakugo's earphones, and he hadn't been able to figure out the displaced item was in Shinso's room. It was rather ingenious. He couldn't figure out Shoji's item either, and a few that he had figured out had either been hidden really well, or had been taken by the time he got there like Hagakure's curler. When the bell rings, Aizawa pulls them all aside one by one. When it's Midoriya's turn, he's asked to name what items his classmates had had, and then he was asked to present his as well as any that he had collected. He'd felt a little bit like a cat who'd got the cream as he deposited his little nest of items. Less than it would be if he hadn't given some of them to Todoroki, but still enough that he felt good about himself, especially with Aizawa giving him a small smirk. After everyone had been debriefed, Aizawa heads to the chalkboard and begins to write everyone's name on the board alongside the item that belonged to them. Midoriya paused briefly when he sees a hairbrush next to Momo's name. She planted a decoy? He glances over and catches her eye. She smiles softly and turns back to the board. That was clever. Luckily, that was the only surprise of the morning. When asked to bring the items up to the front and leave them on the desk, Midori brings up his eight and Todoroki brings his three. Shoji brings two and Jiro three as well. Shinso and Bakugo manage to keep their own and Tokoyami has his own as well as Mina's. Good job. All of you managed to identify at least some of the items your classmates had, though not all of them. A few even managed to keep their items away from greedy hands and gather other items. I'm glad you're finally starting to learn something. 
Tomorrow will be the final test, so be prepared. I saw it turns to Midoriya. Midoriya, you're needed in the staff room. Everyone behave while we're gone. Midoriya nods and stands, but he can't help but wonder why he's needed. For once, though, he's not thinking the absolute worst of his peers and classmates, so he's relatively relaxed as he follows Aizawa down the halls. Whatever it is, he can handle it. Well, that was Game 5 by Every Shade of Happy. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave comments or kudos, and definitely check out some of the other podfix I've made. Um, because Game 6 hasn't been released as of yet, I therefore cannot make a recording of it. However, when it is released, I will immediately record it and post it to the series. So stay tuned for that. As always, remember to hydrate, not dehydrate, and love yourself.